So, Mike, you know it's important if I'm interrupting your vacation to ask you what it means that Caleb Williams doesn't have an agent right now. Well, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't mean much because he's using someone by all appearances to negotiate with the Bears on his behalf. He said over the weekend he's not handling it. His lawyers are. The problem is because he's not represented by an NFLPA certified agent, they have to be very careful how they go about communicating with the Bears. I asked the league about the situation. They said the Bears told them we are negotiating with Caleb Williams, even though Caleb says he's not handling it. Now, one of the common devices when this goes on is to set up a dummy email account that is supposedly the player, but it's actually one of his representatives communicating with the team. Regardless, there's no contract. I mean, others have gotten these deals done. There are five guys unsigned right now. He's the only one who's not represented by an agent. The other four, five guys in the, t- in the first round, I should say, the other four aren't signed either. And there isn't much to haggle about in this day and age for NFL rookies. So the whole thing's weird. But, yeah, it's awkward to say the least when Caleb Williams is saying, I'm not handling it, and the Bears are telling the league he is handling it. But aren't these draft picks slotted? There's Caleb Williams, like, what is left to negotiate? There's three things, Dan. One, when do they get their signing bonus money? Some teams want to give you half of it, for example, within 30 days, and then the other half up to a year from now, which is money in the bank vault for the team, and they earn interest off of it. And the more they can do that, the more money they ultimately make by holding that cash back. Mm -hmm. Number two, what does it take for the future guarantees to void? What will the player do to allow the team to say, we're voiding the guarantees and then we're going to cut you because you ended up being one of the players who inevitably was a bust because we know of the 32 guys taken in round one, up to half of them aren't going to work out and the team might have an escape hatch if the player does something he shouldn't do, rip up the remaining guarantees. Because that's it. we hear about guaranteed contracts in the NFL all the time. For the first round of the draft, all four years of every player picked are fully guaranteed. So you're making that investment blind as to whether or not the guy's going to work out. So if he gets in trouble, if he gets suspended, whatever it is, they, they can haggle over the contours of the language that would allow the team to say, we're out, guarantees void. And then the last one is, if they do cut the guy with remaining guarantees left, can he double dip with another team? That's the offset language. If I get cut and you owe me $20 million, I keep that 20 and I make whatever I get somewhere else. The team will say, we want a credit for whatever you make somewhere else. Those are the three issues. Signing bonus. Guarantee void, offset language. I'm trying to find out, is there something else I'm missing? But historically, since 2011, those have been the three sticking points for rookie contracts.